Uh, this video contains uh, some dried blood, not fresh, no missing limbs, no missing fingers, but some dry blood. So if you can't handle that, don't watch it. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the little pit bike. Uh, in the previous episode, we did uh, try and starting the bike. Uh, but uh, it doesn't want to start. We seems to have uh, it seems to have uh, spark fuel, uh, some somewhat compression, but I don't think that compression is uh, suffice to start it. So uh, let's uh, tear off the top end and we'll see what we can find in there. So let's take a look. So we will start the work by uh, taking off the timing. Uh, to do that, we need to uh, loosen the tensioner, which is right here. Then. Uh, take off the wheel that's uh, on the camshaft and then we can take off the uh, top end so so with the clean drift band we can take the 14 millimeter and we can loosen the tensioner there's a spring with the plunger as you can see <laughs> there goes the spring And you can leave it in there, I suppose. That relieved the tension off of the cam chain. Now let's remove the cap covering the little cover here. That's it. So nine millimeter. Take those off. And now we have what I think was, what was it? 10 millimeters on the, the front of the engine, yeah. 10 millimeter. One, two, three, four washers. Take the front cover off. That reveals our camshaft. Then we have one eight millimeter bolt holding the cylinder head to the cylinder. So we can take those off. Like that. And now I have to have to take the exhaust off and with the exhaust off uh, we are ready to pull the head. So the exhaust is off. Now the only thing holding the head is this wheel. So let's slide this off. Here is our hat. From where I can see, it looks normal. A bit carbon up, but it's the usual thing. Now to remove the piston, there's some kind of a ground strap hooked to the side of the engine here. So let's. Uh, Let's get that out of our way. So now let's take this idle wheel off. There is a little idle wheel inside this. So let's take it off. And also let's take off this eight millimeter here. That's it. Now uh, let's see, I can see a bunch of silicone and yes, I can see our problem right now. So here's our, our cylinder, it's a little bit scored, I don't know if you can see that, I will show you that better, but now let's take a look at the piston, shall we? As you can see, the piston
piston has wear marks on it, so I think the rings are shot. So we will probably replace the piston and rings, probably hone the cylinder, I don't know yet. So let's take a better look at our jug here, I don't know if you can see the little scoring in there, but it doesn't feel... Ah, it does, it does feel bad. It does feel bad in this spot right here, yeah, it does. I don't know if that shows on camera, but uh, there is a spot, there is a bad spot in it. Um, so I think we should hone this thing and at least hone it. Well guys, I took the piston off and you have to see this. Um, we have score marks on it. As you can see, it's scored. I don't know if that shows on camera, but uh, it's scored as hell. Not deep scratches though, but he got some. But the real main issue with this is this. Take a look at this. Can you see the piston ring? Can you see how thin it is? This thing is sharp as a razor and it's no, nothing left of it. The lower one is stuck, as you can see, it's stuck in its groove and you can see the difference in thickness. I don't know if I can unseize it from its uh, unhappy little home. Let's try unseizing it without breaking it. Yeah, we got it unseized, I would guess. Now it's still seized somewhere. Seized right here in this, in these parts. Now it's unseized, so let's take it off and compare it to the first ring, if we can even. It doesn't want to turn freely. So here we go. So now let's do a comparison. Can you see the difference in the thickness? Let's insert them into the into the jug here and let's see what clearance we get. This piston doesn't want to fit in this jug. So we got it in the jug here, so as you can see we have a pretty big gap with this second ring. And now let's... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, this is the first ring. This is the first ring. So now let's... Uh, Insert the second ring. Use a piston as a push. Can you see the difference? I will move it a bit down. Can you see the difference? Can you see how closer the gap is? Yeah, this is trash. We need new piston, new rings and maybe a new cylinder, we'll see. Another thing, can you see how pitted this piston pin is? That's not good either. All right, and here I am back on the pit bike. 
something came in the mail today, so let's let's unbox it. We'll see what we got. So what do we have here? Mom, mom, and mom. What is this? What is this? A cylinder kit? No way! I can't get it one-handed. Here we go! Bam! We got new cylinder set. It's hard to do one-handed. New piston. There should be the piston rings. Oh yes, and new air filter, I forgot about that. We have new air filter, new piston, there should be piston rings somewhere, gaskets. Piston rings are probably here. Yeah, there are our piston rings. Our piston. Coated. Looks nice. Let's see. It has some play in the, but nothing major. So uh, let's uh, compare them. As you can see, there is a little bit of uh, material missing from this. It was flush, but uh, other than that, the they are uh, the pretty similar. Um, here we have the old stuff. We need to transfer the dowel pins. One and two dowel pins. This one, yeah, this hole is slightly bigger as, you, as I can see. Yeah, that can be a problem. Okay, so let's start with the piston assembly. And then this one. Now our piston is complete and ready for installment. Uh, let's uh, take our piston, let's position it with the EN on the top. That stands for intake. And this has intake on the top. So let's, uh, let's get it inside the, our little four-way contraption here. Let's uh, dump the piston pin in some oil and let's uh, let's press it in. What the hell? Ah, now it goes. Well, it doesn't Go through the, the connection rod. Uh, let me do some measurements real quick. So remember how I showed you this old uh, piston pin, how it's uh, real pitted, how uh, chunks missing right here. Uh, I think this is the cause of our uh, four-way piston wire and also uh, the piston rings wire because the pin should uh, move freely on the connection rod. That's why there is two uh, oil holes to oil it um, when it's moving. And this would explain uh, the four-way drag marks and uh, 
burned up uh, piston rings. So uh, I will use uh, 800 grit sandpaper on bolt and I will go through with the bolt and the sandpaper and try to free up the clearances between the connection rod and the piston pin so we can move freely again. So once again I'm asking for financial support. I could use some belty sanders for this. Uh, I'm kidding, the political jokes are not for me. So, But uh, I worked on this for um, half an hour or so and now the piston pin is moving freely and we can proceed uh, with the assembly. Okay, now we can see that the piston, if I can grab it, is moving nice and freely. So we can proceed and oil all the meeting surfaces before the install. So oil your rings, oil your cylinder walls. And then spread your piston gaps so they are nice and spread. And we can proceed with the uh, cylinder install. So here we go. Nice and easy line up the studs. And then line your piston. It has a taper on the bottom, so that will help you see the rings in. So the cylinder, as you can see, the cylinder is on, but um, it was a little bit tight uh, around the jacket when it where it meets the uh, cases. So I had to press it in, kinda. And as I went uh, to kick it over, and I wanted to see if it spins freely, I held on to this little chain with my hand, with this finger like that. And that was a mistake, because as I went to kick it, the chain jammed underneath the flywheel and it pulled my finger and uh, it's not bad but uh, at first when it happened I think I thought I'm, I'm done because the finger was so tight uh, on this that I felt that the blood pressure in the part of the finger that was caught stopped and I was on the other side of the engine and I couldn't move the magneto to free myself. So what I had to do was I had to pull the machine towards me, walk it back to the tools, grab 14 millimeter, ratchet, reach over, free myself up and I was fortunately able uh, to free myself up so um, there is a little bit of blood here because it poured and I have some blood right here some blood on the tools on the seat here on the floor and so so I ripped open this, uh, where it is, there was something, I, I, I returned it here. I ripped apart, as you can see by the blood on the top here, I ripped apart this, uh, this first aid kit, I patched myself up and uh, the finger survived with just a little scuff and a couple, couple of uh, uh, blood, blood stains on the bottom. So 
Uh, the finger, the finger survived, so we can move forward with this reassembly. So uh, be careful when you're doing anything, wear your safety gear and all that stuff. And another thing that I have, I've installed new, new, new for me, uh, vice. I got this vice uh, from my grandfather, which he's not lo longer with us, but um, I had it f for uh, around a year or two and I finally mounted it here so we now have a vise. Alright, I ran out of daylight. Uh, I got everything together. Uh, if you are new here and you're asking why I don't have uh, the lights in here, as you can see, I do not have no lights. That's because I do not have no electricity in the building also, because uh, if you are watching me for some quantum time, you already know, but if you are not, I've got my electricity down there behind the panda, so... So in the next one, we are going to start it, hopefully. Uh, if you want to see that, please subscribe, like, and stay tuned for the next one. Be safe out there, I'm out here, bye.